In the last year or so, I have slowly become very dry in my prayer, and I have started to fear that I may be losing my faith. I cannot imagine my life without Christ. I cannot even say the words, I do not believe. But something is changing in me, and I am frightened. About seven years ago, I lost my best friend to cancer. Oh, I'm so sorry. When he died, my whole life collapsed and my faith was barely surviving. It was a disaster in my life and I functioned for a while, maybe a full year, as if I had no faith, until somehow my love and my trust in God returned. Nothing like that happened this time, but I recognised the signs. I recognised the same desert around me. I try to fit as much time in church as I can. I pray as much as I am able. But slowly I feel as if my faith is draining out of me like a broken vessel that is losing water. This scares me very much because I know the hell of almost losing my faith and I do not want to return there. Ooh, this is such a beautiful, such a, a painful, but such a beautiful email. Thank you. Thank you very much, Serafima. This, this is a, something that goes straight to my heart. And I know, I know what you're talking about, um, unfortunately, or by the grace of God. It depends how you look at it. I know what it feels like to, to have experienced life with capital L, life in you, and then to only be left with the memory of life, where life once dwelt, you just have this shadow and a memory which is almost painful. And there is a risk that we, we institutionalize our faith. There is a risk that we somehow formalize our faith, and that can have this effect. Us also, you know, as in your experience, um, something horrible like losing someone whom we love dearly or a traumatic event can challenge our faith. But, but the time now is for you to go through almost like, like a reset, you know, like those machines or whatever machines we buy in our homes, that they have a reset button and you reset them to factory settings. We need to, from time to time, press that button in ourselves and reset ourselves to, to factory settings. Only that instead of being, you know, made in China or made in the USA, we are made in God and by God, in love and by love. So we need to reset our settings to God and to love. But before I go into that, um, I've already been, you know, carried away by it because I genuinely love your letter. It, it, there's so much heart in it. But before I go into it, I have, I have to make two announcements and I don't want the things to be mixed up. So allow me to do this for half a minute. The first one is that I've realized I have never actually announced to all of you that we have opened our summer pilgrimages. Every summer, as you know, since I believe 2014 or 15, we are running these organized week-long pilgrimages that take you to the most beautiful parts of Mull, Iona and some of the other islands around Mull and Iona, such as St. Brandon's Island or St. Kenneth's Island. We go there together, we pray there together, we spend a full week on Mull at the monastery at Kilninian and on Iona in our pilgrimage on the island of Iona. And if you are interested in joining us, we still have places available. For some reason, I always forget that YouTube is not Facebook. So when I announce something on Facebook, I imagine that I've all already done it here as well. So I'll leave the details in the first comment to this video. If you are interested in joining us, please do. If you do not have the time to be with us for a full week, or if you don't have the funds to afford one of these long paid pilgrimages, 
that's fine. We still carry on our monastic tradition of welcoming you and offering you free hospitality. So three nights, whenever you come, assuming within the limits of our you know accommodation you can stay with us for free we'll feed you we'll talk to you we'll pray with you we'll give you all our love these week long um pilgrimages allow us to get to places we are not able to get to otherwise simply because it's it's expensive to rent sailing boats and to rent motor boats and to you know move about uh, to do these things and it also keeps us alive and there's no shame in working for your survival there's no shame in work there's no shame in survival so if you can come and join these pilgrimages you are welcome and you are greatly contributing to our monastery if you cannot come you are still welcome and we would love to meet you person to person and to pray with you and uh, there is also a pilgrimage to Moldavia, to the painted monasteries of Moldavia. That's my home. That's my monastic home. And um, it's like taking you in my, in my parents' living room or in the old home where my grandparents used to live and where I was a child. Um, maybe I should record a video about that one because it is something that especially you, Christians in the West, you have a hundred percent not experienced the madness the madness of a small region small region that has hundreds of monasteries and skits and hermitages and this does not include the hundreds of parish churches and missions and everything else it is so beautiful that it just it's overwhelming and i need to prepare better if i am to present that pilgrimage to you and to finish this, um, speaking of pilgrimages, I shall visit your country, if you live in the United States, for two Sundays. I think it's the weekend of February 12th and February 19th. So if you're anywhere close to Franklin in Tennessee, I shall be at the parish of St. Ignatius there. If you're anywhere close to Santa Rosa in California, I shall be at the Cathedral of St. Seraphim in Santa Rosa. And I shall also be uh, next week, actually, on Thursday, I'll include the dates below, at the Cathedral of St. John Maximovich of San Francisco in San Francisco. So if you want to meet in person, if you want to just have a chat, I would love to get beyond this machine and just be able to give you a proper, proper monastic hug and a proper in-person blessing. Now, we owe a lot to, to Serafima because this, this is clearly an email she wrote out of her heart. And, um, and it requires an answer from one's heart. We've said that sometimes, not only you, Serafima, but all of us, we have to go through a process of rediscovering the reason why we've become Christians in the first place. I'm not talking about just being baptized as a child. I'm not talking about being dragged to church by your parents. I'm talking about that process of a personal conversion. You need to go back to the stone, to the foundation of your faith. And sometimes that is challenged because of a traumatic event, something like losing someone you love very dearly, and the experience of you losing your friend is such an event. But most other times it happens because we have slowly managed to somehow formalize our faith and turn something that was meant to be alive into something that is just a formality. And that happens almost always because there's a misbalance between our priorities. We have our spiritual life and we have the worldly life, ideally they are imbued with each other. Ideally your life in the world is prayer itself. 
and perhaps we should talk about that in some other video. But what happens in, in the case of most of us is that we make a choice and we prioritize one over the other. And if we prioritize our worldly existence, our worldly life, over our spiritual life, that creates a tension in you. It's almost as if that creates another you within you. You've got the worldly self and then you've got the spiritual self and there is a tension between them because each of them demands uh, their rights. They all scream for their rights and that creates a split, an internal split in you and that is going to be painful and out of that either one or the other will win. There's no way both of them can win. And this, my dear Serafima, is where the reset begins. You need to go back to that stone, to that foundation of your faith. For some of us, such as in my case, that is a fear of death. Not death as in the process of dying. Of course, I'm not looking forward to it like anyone else. But it's not that that scares me. It's the thought of going back into nothingness. The thought that everything, that, that, that spark of, of being, of existence in me and in you and in every human being I've met might somehow be extinguished. That thought is as alive today in me as it was 20-something years ago when I decided to enter a monastery. That, for me, is the bottom line. That is the stone foundation of my faith. A need to fight for my being so that I may be and not be extinguished into nothingness. Go deep, my dear Serafima. Go deep. Go where the waters are deep. Swim in the most dangerous waters. Go into the most dangerous zones of your faith. Go where you are afraid to go. Don't revert back into our spiritual comfort zones because we all build them up. But the thing, the truth about these spiritual comfort zones is that they are built around a fake God. They are built around an idol and it's actually a process of idolatry rather than believing in Christ, the living God. And that's what I meant by formalization. Go deep. Go where it's dangerous. Go where you're afraid. Forget about the, forgive me, lovey-dovey version of Christ, my best friend who travels this journey of life with me, holding my hand and we skip together through a field of flowers. That doesn't exist. That doesn't exist except in, like, you know, kindergarten Christianity. Christ, God, is frightening. Not in the way in which someone who wants to harm us is frightening, but he is frightening because he is the only source of being and our only hope to be in eternity, to exist in eternity, to be, be, be one with him. Our only hope is his free will, his free love for us. And it is a frightening, a paralyzing thought that somehow we might lose that. That's our only hope. Don't revert in your comfort zones, because in a comfort zone, we worship a God whom we created according to our image. We take God as revealed in the Gospel and by the teaching of the Holy Fathers, and then instead of holding on to the fullness of the revelation, we pick and choose. We choose to ignore parts we don't like, and we exacerbate the parts that we love. And instead of looking at God as He is, as He revealed Himself to us, instead of doing that, we end up looking at praying to and worshipping a God we have created according to our weakness. We take the revealed God and we reshape Him in the image of, of our fallenness. Instead of that, and where life resides, where life dwells, we should allow ourselves to be reshaped in the image of His being. 
That's what I mean when I say don't look for an easy way out. There is no easy way out. This is a matter of not even life versus death. Because every human being, Christian or not, a believer or not, has to deal with that. We all know that we shall die and we all have to deal with that. And every human being, even non-Christians or non-believers, find a way to deal with death. This is a question of falling back into nothingness or being, residing, dwelling, existing in the being of God, in the act of God's being in eternity. This is the battle. This is what is at stake. And for this, you cannot play it safe. You cannot go where it's comfortable and easy. Faith is not meant to be easy. Faith is supposed to crucify us, which is what you're experiencing, so that we discover that the source of true life, capital L, is in Christ alone, not in the world. Create a story with Christ. Create a secret with him. Make him his accomplice in your secret spiritual life. Close the door of your room, the door of your heart, and make it all happen in there. Remember the words of the Desert Fathers who taught us that it takes long years or decades to heat up our cell, the room of our heart. It takes decades to make a fire and to heat it up, and it takes one hour of opening it unwisely in order to lose all that heat that it took so long to create. Create a secret with Christ. Do something that resembles in your life walking on water. Do something wild. Do jump in your faith. Let go of the tediousness and the safety nets of your daily spiritual life and do something that is mad in the eyes of the world around you and in the perception of your worldly self. Because what is mad and unjustified in the perceptions of your worldly self is going to be life-giving for your spiritual self. Go deep, deep inside, my dear Serafima. Don't be afraid to challenge everything in you. Because if you do it in a spirit of obedience, if you do it in a spirit of humility before God and with complete nakedness, honesty before Him, if you do it not as an act of rebellion, but as an act of honest, truthful searching for Him, He will be there guiding you. He will be there blessing you and pouring upon you much more than you could have even hoped for. Go deep, deep, deep to the core of your being, to the marrow of your self, of your true self. Discover the being, the core of your being, and bless it and, and act on it. You know, I frequently end these videos by blessing you. And I say, may, may you be blessed to the core of your being, to the marrow of your being. I don't mean that as beautiful words, as a metaphor. I actually have this in my mind. I actually mean the core of your being, the marrow of who you are, what makes you uniquely yourself. Do whatever works for you to get back in touch with that. And then, and then, once you've rediscovered who you are, face again this loving yet frightful, awe-inspiring God. Swim deep. Go where awe dwells, where awe resides. And that's where you rediscover who you are. And that's how you're going to rediscover Christ's true image reflected on who you are. If you lose sight of who you are, it is impossible to clearly see 
the reflected image of God in your heart. I could give you lots of examples of what this means, but it's so personal, it's so uniquely yours that the examples I've heard from others in confession may seem completely off to you. But just as an example, I know people who go wild camping. They just, they just take three, four a week off and they just take a tent and they go all alone and they just pray in the wilderness. And that actually works for them. I know people who do the opposite. They just immerse themselves in doing good deeds for other people. I know people who just cook until they drop and then they go out on this feeding spree and they share food with all the homeless people that they can meet in their hometown. And they do that for a few days or they do it recurrently, a few days every week or at least, you know, a few days every month. And they do it all in secret. For the reason I've told you, because if it's not your secret with God, if it's not your secret with Christ, the glue between you and Him is very, comes undone very easily. For me, I require to be alone, physically removed. I require a physical distance between me and other human beings. The greater that distance, the more alone I am, the more space I have to look around and see nothing, the closer I am to Christ. The more I can literally fall down and scream until I pour my being out, the closer I am to God. And icons, icons are essential to me. So hiding somewhere, all alone. I've, I've actually experienced, when I was in Moldavia, in my monastery, moments of such deep, deep, I don't want to call it depression, because it wasn't depression. I've, I've experienced depression as well, and I know the difference. It's just a lack of life, that all I wanted to do and all I've done was to just hide in a closet. You just go into a closet or you hide under your bed. I've done both. And you stay there for hours on end, just staring, staring at an icon. Or staring at a white wall, if that white wall for you is an image of God's unknowable essence. Anything, everything can work if it is the right thing for you. But only you and your spiritual father will know what the right thing is for you. Press that reset button, my dear Serafima. And I promise you that once you hit stone again, once you find that foundation of your faith again, you will be able to rebuild your faith, not as before, but completely anew. Completely anew. Be blessed, all of you, my dear ones. Be blessed to the core, the foundation, the marrow of your being. Amen. Amen. Amen.